keep moving forward Take another step Keep moving forward Take another step, take another step Don't let the fear that turns your feet to stone Leave you feeling all alone Your alibi up in the sky Is watching with his shepherd's eye So just remember he'll provide And keep moving forward to breathe hard to know which way to go and just how to proceed and when it's dark dark as night and it's hard to see where this will lead don't give up the fight and when you're feeling like you got nothing left inside when you're feeling like you got nothing left inside It's time Then you'll know it's time Don't let the fear that turns your feet to stone Leave you feeling all alone Your alibi up in the sky Is watching with his shepherd's eye So just remember he'll provide Keep 
moving forward Take another step Keep moving forward Take another step Take another step Keep moving forward Take another step Keep moving forward Take another step Take another step Don't let the fear that turns your feet to stone Just remember he'll provide Keep moving forward like to pray for a different ministry in the area. Today we will continue to pray for your friends, your family, your co-workers, uh, acquaintance that you have invited to be in church this Easter weekend. Amen. We want to continue to pray for them and uh, trust the Lord that he'll watch over them. Last Thursday we had a good turnout for the prayer meeting time. This coming Thursday we are doing the same thing here at nine o'clock. We meet for prayer, and, uh, and we'll be praying for all the needs of the church members and friends and everyone else. So if you are available, we would love to have you to come, and let's spend some time together. Um, so let's go to prayer, and let's trust the Lord to watch over us as we worship him today. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your goodness and your mercy towards us. We thank you for past blessings, but we realize that past blessings cannot suffice. So today we come with our cups turned up and we pray and believe that you would fill us up and running over. And in turn, we would bless others because you have blessed us. Thank you for our church family today. For everyone here, we pray that you would watch over them. You know the very needs of their hearts. And we bring them all before you and pray that in the name of Jesus, that favor would be granted. I pray for uh, family members, sons and daughters and brothers and sisters, moms and dads, children, grandchildren, especially those who are not Christians. We bring them before you and pray, oh God, that this time around, that uh, your Holy Spirit will go before them and soften their hearts and help that 
many will open their hearts to Jesus Christ. We thank you and we praise you for what you're going to do. We pray for Pastor Don as he will come and share the word that you would watch over him. Uh, give him the, the words that he needs to impart to us. We thank you. Watch over our worship team as they warm our hearts in songs and, and hymns. And uh, we give you all the praise and thanks. And as we are being faithful stewards to you today in our giving, in our tithes, in our offering, we pray that you would bless both the gift and the giver and use them both for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, by the way. Uh, just quick disclaimer. Uh, if you guys need any assistance with the bathrooms or anything, let us know. We can use it. We just have to refill it. The water is off to the building, uh, broken pipes. So just let us know, and we'll, one of the ushers and us will help you out. So let's stand together. My Redeemer lives. <laughs> Back 
peace. Bring it all to peace. The storm surrounding me, let it break at your name. Still, call the sea to still. The rage in me to still every wave at your name. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, breathe, call these bones to live, call these lungs to sing once again. just discussing before church with a friend they were talking about an experience they had in a storm and they said they just they just grabbed hands and they spoke the name of Jesus and I, I can remember being in, in such 
turmoil and like just those moments where we tremble. And I remember speaking that name and that peace coming over the situation. The situation wasn't solved and I didn't have the answers, but I had the answer. And it was his name that just carried me through the storm, the unknown, the scary, the tough, the hard, the annoying. He makes the darkness tremble. And just that power that we have to just speak his name and invite him into the situation it makes all the difference. I'm so grateful for that name that makes the darkness tremble. Father, you're so good. You're so good. Thank you for the power that you've given us to speak your name over any situation. Thank you, Father, for coming and intervening on our behalf and, Lord, being our intercessor so that we may access the throne room of God. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for us. Lord, I pray that your spirit that we feel right now, Father, would just stay stay with us. You are invited and welcome here. Father, I pray that, that, that this Holy Spirit would just carry us through this service. Father, as we listen to your word and we learn and we grow, Lord, help us to just soak it up. And we give you honor and glory in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Good morning. How is everybody? Good? Well, I'm Guy. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a volunteer here, and they've asked me to do announcements yet again. So here I am. This may, this may be my last Sunday. We'll see. Uh, when you came in the door, you should have received a paper program. If you didn't get one, please raise your hand, and Barb will bring one to you. We've got one here. At the bottom of the program is a perforated uh, connection card. So Please fill out as much as you're comfortable with. Tear that off. We ask that everyone please fill one out every Sunday just so we can know how to be praying for you. We do actually pray for you. So please fill out the connection card and drop it in the blue box by the door. If you're a first-time guest, um, we would love to connect with you and give you a gift at the blue welcome table in the back. So if you just fill out as much as you're comfortable with on the connection card, bring that to the back. We do have a free gift for you. Check in on Facebook. For each check-in, Hope Community Church will donate $1 to Choices Pregnancy Center in Wildwood. Um, they are a nonprofit organization that are providing support for women and men dealing with unexpected pregnancy. Um, so a great organization. If uh, you would like more information, please go to choices-pregnancy.org. Um, I'm going to need help pronouncing this again, Kimberly. Hyasode Sabbath. Um, that is a weekly, yep, weekly gathering. Um, it's going to start Wednesday, April 10th, and run through May 29th on Wednesday evenings um, from 7.30 to 9 o'clock. There will also be two Sunday um, events, two Sunday classes. So for more information, um, please talk to Kimberly Wolf here. The workbooks are $15. So let Kimberly know if you're interested. I'm, I'm assuming she'll have to order that for you. Um, Easter, the big announcement. We're one week away from Easter, so happy Palm Sunday, everyone. Easter is the one Sunday of the year where it's not weird to invite friends to church. So take advantage of that. Um, when you came in, you should have had two of these on your seat. Um, it should be relatively easy. We all know people, so invite two people to church. Um, we do ask that if you're a regular attendee, you would consider going to the 830 service we will be having two services on, on Easter Sunday, 8.30 and 10 o'clock. I know I said this two weeks prior, but uh, please do consider going to the early service just to make room for guests who may be coming to the 10 o'clock service. Um, so to, uh, here's a little memorable thing. Park in the back, sit in the front, okay? We, we're asking if you're able to walk up the hill that you would park in the back at the Strata air conditioning parking lot. That's where our staff parks every Sunday morning. Um, so if you can park in the back, Sit in the front, allow room for guests who might be coming in at the last minute. That would be much appreciated on Easter. Um, Hope Community Church will also be having a booth at Wildwood's Easter Extravaganza. That is Saturday, March 30th at 10 a.m., and it's going to be held at Millennium Park. Um, 
and the baseball fields there in Wildwood. So if you're interested in working the booth, um, hanging out with Pastor Don for a little while, talk to Pastor Don about that. Again, that is the Easter extravaganza on Saturday, March 30th at 10 a.m. Uh, reminder, you can give to the church by texting 352-444-1771. You can also put your offering in the blue box at the back of the church. Uh, we hope you find the service relevant. Please stay after for coffee and pastries. Thanks. So there should be a picture up there. Yes, okay. So that, that, that's a picture of Bar Barb and I, and we're at the uh, Mount of Olives in, in Jerusalem. This is back in uh, 2018. But let me put up a second picture so you can see what's behind that. That's just to let you know that we were actually there. Uh, but <laughs> uh, so, so you can you can see it. I don't know if... Oh, yeah, yours is a little bit... See where that dome is? That's, that's kind of... Um, what would be left of the temple is, is, is right in there. You have the wailing wall and, and all of that. And, and on this particular day of our tour, uh, so we're at the Mount of Olives, and, and we were given this option that you can walk from the Mount of Olives into Jerusalem, um, which is kind of cool, or you could take, take a bus dry, ride, and you see most of the same sites on the, on the bus ride, but, but you don't have to deal with the difficulties. That, that is a really steep uh, decline going, going into there and um, kind of walk back and forth to, to get through there. And um, e either way, it, it was like a really good opportunity to just kind of, uh, at, least, at least for me, to think about what would it have been like for Jesus to be paraded into Jerusalem on that day. And, and that's kind of um, what I'd like you to think about today as, as we're thinking about that. What, what would it be like if you were there with him um, in, in that parade, you're going into Jerusalem. What, what would it have been like um, the next few days? Kind of, kind of put yourself in the story. The story is not about us, but, but we can enter into the story. We've been invited to do so. And, and uh, there was a couple of things going through my head um, as, as we're going through there. And one is the irony. Um, you see all these tombs in that picture. Those are tombs right, right there at the... At, at the closest to you part. Uh, those, those are tombs. Um, and before Jesus was even born in Bethlehem, this was prime, a prime burial spot. I mean, uh, if, if, if you had money or connections, you know, you wanted these, these spots. Well, everybody wanted them, but the, the money and connections helped you to get them. Um, but people believe, the Jewish people believe that um, when, when the resurrection happens, when, when people rise from the dead, uh, that's where it's going to start. It's going to start right there. So you're like, this is like first in line, <laughs> right? <laughs> right here. You 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 want to be right here, and and you're even going to see the Messiah during that resurrection. And 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 I would argue that there are some people that were buried there that saw that already. Um, but but so this think think about this. Your journey begins in this place that's kind of full of this es eschatological or end times ambiance. You know, you're you're going into Jerusalem there, and then I wonder I wonder did the disciples think about that? Like here's here's the place where where resurrection. This is where things are going to go down. And then I'm thinking of another thought. This guy asked. This guy said to me, "Pick up your cross and follow me," <laughs> and I'm following him into a place that I know is very dangerous. And there's this reminder: they are just walking by tombs as I'm following Jesus into Jerusalem, where they, you know, they basically said, "Hey, come back to Jerusalem. We're going to kill you." And so here we are. We're we're entering into to Jerusalem, and I'm thinking. Um, once you get past those, those tombs, that's probably a pretty easy journey. I mean, for those guys, not, not those of us that ride on tour buses and, and typically drive in cars or driven in cars. That's a hard walk. But these, these guys walk everywhere. I'm thinking, this is the easiest day of following Jesus. You're in a parade. People are literally cheering. You're like, yeah, I'm, I'm with him, you know. 
Are you going to say that later when they arrest him? Yeah, I'm with him. But, but on, on this day, it's, it's, it's really easy to, to follow Jesus. People have expectation. They're calling him the king. This is a celebration. The difficulty comes once you get to Jerusalem. The difficulty and the question that we need to ask as we follow, am I still going to walk in the way of Jesus when it gets hard? Am I going to walk in the way of Jesus when he gets to Jerusalem? And he does some weird things, quite frankly. You know, we look out and go, what, what, what's he doing here? Jesus, you're causing trouble right now. You know, um, Jesus, you're talking to people we don't like. Am I still going to follow Jesus? Am I going to follow Jesus when he confronts my worldview? And if Jesus doesn't confront your, confront your worldview... You, you might be lying, okay? When, when Jesus confronts my worldview, how I want to see things, how I want things to happen, well, I still follow him. And so the, the next several weeks, uh, next week, uh, we're going to start this sermon series called Let It Change You. But I want to invite you to do that today. Follow Jesus into Jerusalem. Let, let his story, let Jesus himself change you. Let it change you. Let it, let it not just be information and go, yeah, that's the day Jesus walked in and they laid these coats down and, and whatever, but, but let it change you. See yourself. See yourself going into Jerusalem. See yourself as Jesus weeps over the city. See yourself as Jesus cleanses the, the temple and see his heart, see his lordship in, in your life. So let's, let's just jump in. Let's look at this parade. Uh, Luke chapter 19, and for the most part, we'll, we'll stay in Luke 19. But uh, Luke 19, 35, Jesus tells him to, to, to go out and get this donkey, the, the colt of a donkey. And he says, uh, it says here, and they brought it to Jesus, 1935, I don't know if I gave the full address. They brought it to Jesus, and throwing their coat, cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. And as he was drawing near, already on the way down to Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and to praise God with a loud voice for all his mighty works that they have seen. And that was pretty cool, right? I mean, you just kind of you just kind of feel that atmosphere. You, you feel the voices coming up. You, you know you're in the presence of God. And they're saying, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, teacher, rebuke your disciples. And he answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. I, and I, I just love Jesus' response there. You know, these, these Pharisees, you know, everybody else is saying, this, this is the king, this is the one who's coming in the name of the Lord. And they see Jesus as a teacher at best, something else is at worst. But Jesus just tells them, he's like, listen, if this worship that you're seeing, if this would stop, he's like, the stones, the stones will cry out. And in other words, Jesus is going, there's something very significant going on and you do very well to pay attention. Something, something important. I was kind of wishing like maybe they would stop for a minute and see what, what would happen. But um, something significant is going on. And it's almost like Jesus' invitation to say, let this change you. Let, let, let this transform. I, I came to transform you. I came to redeem you. Let it do something in your life. Now, the Pharisees, they had multiple concerns uh, this week, um, and probably uh, this isn't the first parade that happened this week. Let, let me suggest that there was another parade. Uh, so remember this, leading up to the celebration of, of the Passover, the city of Jerusalem would just swell up over five times. There, there would be a, a ton of people that, that, that would come, come in, um, pilgrims coming there to celebrate, uh, but something would happen sometimes during those celebrations. Um, riots and uprisings would, would take place. Especially here, you, you look 
you know, there's this talk about a Messiah coming. Um, and typically in Messiah talk, they're, they're talking about overthrowing, you know, governments and all kinds of things. Um, and so if you're Pilate, you're not really keen on this. Um, and so, so Rome would typically make sure that they show up with a military presence. And so while Jesus is, is, is riding in an, on a donkey and he's coming to bring his kingdom uh, to bring peace that comes with us, there's another parade. And I, I would guess this parade was not as welcomed. Um, there's a parade uh, with, with Pilate, the Roman governor. He, Pilate doesn't live in Jerusalem. He lives in Caesarea. Probably got a nice little place, you know, out there by the sea, nice little cottage. Um, but at this point, he needs to make the 70-mile tr- or 60-mile trek into Jerusalem. And, and what does Pilate bring with him? Pilate brings, brings the troops, not mounted on donkeys, by the way, <laughs> mounted on war horses with chariots and with swords and representing the power and the might of the Roman Empire. You got two parades kind of coming together. Uh, the Roman Empire is bringing their version of peace, Pax Romana, and they're going to maintain, and, and they're going to let them know who's, who's in control, who's in charge. In some ways, you look and you go, this is a recipe for a showdown. It, it appears as if there's going to be some kind of showdown this week. Um, Zechariah actually prophesied ab- about this moment. Let me, let me read that and um, see if we can, we can c- connect with what's going on here. Zechariah 9 9 and 10 says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And it says, verse 10, And I will cut off the chariot. The chariot's coming. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. So you see the gospel here, it's going out to the nations. And his rules shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. So, so Jesus is coming, he's, he's coming to Jerusalem, he's going to bring his peace and, and his rule and I think it'd be very easy for us to go, okay, well, it's just a showdown between the empire and the kingdom. Kingdom's coming here, the, the, the empire's coming here. And I would imagine there was many in the first century that they would be pretty satisfied with that. They would be pretty satisfied with, with Israel defeating Rome. Maybe not the fullness of the kingdom of God, but if... But if I think many would be satisfied that Jesus comes in, defeats the Romans, kicks them out. Yay, everything's good in in our lives. And many throughout history are content with the defeat of our enemies. I'm probably just as guilty as that, where, where I look and like, okay, Jesus, just take care of my enemies. And sometimes Jesus goes, I'm gonna take care of your enemies, but I gotta take care of something else. I gotta take care of this. I got to. I got to take care. Take care of your heart, because sometimes we're we're very content. Destroy my enemies, but we don't fix what's destroying us from within. And it'd be very easy to go. Okay, this is this is just a battle between a bad Roman Empire or bad leadership of Israel and Jesus. And I'm not suggesting that Jesus doesn't bring all these things under his control or under his rule and reign. He does. But the battle is bigger. The battle is bigger. Because sometimes we're, we, we choose sides, right? We go, who's good? Is, is it Rome? Is, is it Israel? And, and, you, and you, you, know, you can make your, your argument there over which one's, which one's good, which one's, which one's bad. But let me suggest that it's bigger than that. It's bigger than the Roman Empire. It's bigger than whatever empire we, we trust in today. It's bigger than, do I align with the, the Sadducees? Do I align with the Pharisees? Do I align with Herod or Caesar? Whoever, there's a whole bunch of choices of who do I 
align with. And I think when Jesus says, says, if these people, these people that are worshiping, if they were to remain silent, the very st stones would cry out. I think he's saying something. He says, it's, it's bigger than your political situation. It's, it's, bigger, it's bigger than this, this. Sure, the Roman Empire is great. <laughs> he says, but it's bigger than that. He says, what's happening here is cosmic in nature. It's cosmic. I mean, he says, the stones will cry out. We, we, we know, we know from, from, from uh, Romans that, that the entire creation longs for redemption. And, and Jesus isn't just saying, hey, I'm, I'm just coming to be the, the current leader. I'm, I'm coming to do, he's, he's saying, no, I'm coming to be the king of the universe. This, this, is, a, this is a cosmic deal that, that is going down in, in this moment. Jesus is the one after his resurrection who says, he says, all authority on heaven and earth. He's saying universal authority. R.C. Sproul says this. He says, the New Testament portrays Jesus as king of the universe, a king with a cosmic scope, a cosmic authority, and cosmic majesty. We, we, we get caught up in these, these little things. And Jesus goes, come back to this big picture. This is, this is a cosmic story that I'm inviting you to. And I think there's an issue. There's an issue that, that I need to face. There's an issue that you need to face if we seek to follow Jesus and I seek to walk in his ways. And we understand that issue with what comes right before this parade and what comes right after this parade. It, it's fascinating, right? Right before Jesus goes into Jerusalem, he tells this parable. And the parable ends like this. Luke 19, 27. He says, but as for these enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slaughter them before me. You catch that little phrase there? They did not want me to reign over them. I feel like that's the biggest issue in my life. Where do I want Jesus to reign over me? Jesus, are you king or are, are, are you Lord? Jesus isn't going to come to me and say, are you for Rome or are you for Israel? I don't know if he cares. He's not going to come to me and say, are you, hey, are you a Democrat? Are you a Republican? Are you, a, are you an independent? He, he's not going to ask me those things. I mean, I, I, could, I could say Jesus all I want, but the core issue is, does Jesus reign in my heart? Does, it, it, Jesus says, Here, here's the issue. They did not want me to reign over them. Is, is, is he my king? Is he your king? The Bible tells us that one day every tongue will confess, every knee is going to bow, that Jesus is Lord. And, and so many times I, I hear people say, well, well, Jesus is my Savior. And, and if that's true, that's awesome. That's awesome that Jesus is your Savior. He's, Jesus is the Savior of the world. But let me remind you that Jesus is not just a great Savior. Jesus is not just my personal Savior. Jesus is Lord. Okay? Jesus is Lord. And, and, and we need to be reminded of that, that he's Lord of the universe, the, the confession of the first church, although they would say Jesus is their Savior, the confession of the first church was Jesus is Lord. Okay, he, He's in charge of my life, which is that great reminder if I'm following him, the parade's easy. <laughs> but is he still Lord? Is he still Lord after the, the, the parade? Because it gets a little weird after the parade. First thing Jesus does, he approaches the city and he weeps over it. The older I get and the more I understand this. <laughs> he, he just weeps over that. This, Jesus is king, but he's no tyrant. All right? He's king, but he's no tyrant. And he's already told his followers how the world leads, and they're to be different. Je Jesus leads in a, in a different way, and he, and he says, look, if you call yourself a follower of me, you need to lead differently. You need to act differently. People should, people should think you're a little weird. All right, for the right reasons. All right, um, don't be weird just to be weird. Be weird for Jesus. 
But if, if he's Lord, then I'm to, to walk in his way. I'm, I'm to follow his example. I'm, I need to be reminded that, that Jesus, the Son of Man, came not to be served, but to serve. How, how insane is that? What, what, what kings, what leaders do you know that say, I'm here to serve <laughs> and not to be served and to give my life as a ransom for many? Uh, the Bible tells us as we continue in Luke uh, 44, it says, and he drew near, and when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it. He just looks out and he, and he starts weeping. And he says, would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. And Jesus came to make peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes, for the days will come upon you when your enemies shall set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear, down, tear you down to the ground and your children within you, and they will, will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. And, and we know in 70 AD there was the destruction of, of the temple and um, Jerusalem. But, but you look in this moment and you think, do the things that cause God to weep, the things that break God's heart, is that what breaks your heart? Are, are, are you moved by the things that, that move God? And it's, and it's from this place of longing. I mean, I mean Jesus seems, seems broken here. He seems broken that, that, that his people have not received him, that, that, and they're not receiving what is theirs to have. And, and from this place, and we, need, we always need to remember this, Jesus now enters the temple. It's not like Jesus just woke up, woke up ticked off, and goes into the temple, all right? <laughs> Jesus is broken. He's longing. He, he, he wants his people to, to come to him, to, to, to be who they were called to be. And uh, Luke 19, um, yeah, I think I gave you a bad reference before. On, there is no Luke 44, so just ignore that. Um, but uh, Luke 19, 45 and 46, the scripture is correct. My reference is wrong. Uh, Luke 19, 45 and 46, as he entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold, saying to them, it is written, my house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. So, so here again, it's like Jesus doing something really weird. He's chasing people out of the temple and and I think we need to understand what's going on here. Um, maybe you grew up in, in, and been a part of some churches that I've been a part of where I would hear this passage and they'd say, well, we can't do a fundraiser in the church because Jesus kicked out people for buying and selling stuff. Or, you know, we can't rent, rent out the property um, because Jesus kicked people out. And, and I think, yeah, that's it. Jesus made whips because people were selling spaghetti dinners to send people out on missions. That, that makes total sense. Um, I'm more diplomatic in, than that. But um, actually, something quite different is going on here. And we're probably more guilty of doing what's going on than, than we think. Um, and for, first of all, we're not meeting in the temple, all right? The temp, temp, temple is within you, and you go out. And so, in many ways, whatever applies here applies wherever you go, okay? Because we are the, the temple of God. And, and you think about in this context, Jesus is walking into the, to the one place, this, this one place where God said, I will meet with the people right here. You can come into my presence. You can draw uh, near to me. And the people that, that worked at the temple, they, they had a job. And their job is pretty simple. Bring people into the presence of God. Maybe you could say make it easy for people to come into the presence of God. Make it easy for them uh, to, to come worship. That's, that's kind of anybody that does anything within the church, the, the worship leaders, their, their job is, is to, to bring us 
or have an environment where we can come in and experience the presence of God. People that are doing sound and light and people that are greeting you and, and people that are carrying in buckets of water so, so we can flush toilets are doing that so that you can come into the presence of God. That, 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 that's their whole job. And it's like, it's like we're missionaries. It's like we're sent by God. But we know from Jesus' teaching and his interaction with the leaders of his day, Jesus told them, he's like, you actually make it harder for people to come to God. Imagine that. Your, your job is to make it easy, and they make it harder. It's kind of like when I would play football, and, and, the, and the coach would like yell at somebody, like, if you're not going to block anybody, at least get out of the way. You know? And it was like, if you're not going to make it, you know, if, if you're not going to create an in, inviting place where people can come and experience reconciliation and forgiveness and the presence of God, at least get out of the way. You know? And in fact, Jesus says, Jesus has told them that their practices uh, drove people away. Now, now think about people, people coming to the temple here. Um, you're, gonna, you're traveling from far. You bring your family. Um, and when you come there, it's not like, like in general, you bought a whole bunch of animals with you that you're going to present for your sacrifice. You would, have, you would have Roman coins, which you could not give at the temple for your offering. So, so the people that, that were exchanging, buying and selling animals and exchanging the coins, they needed that to be there. Uh, but there's, there's a few things going on. One, they were making good money, really good money. Now, could you imagine that? Somebody's getting really wealthy, and here you come, poor family, you're, you're scraping things just to make your sacrifice because you want to connect with God, you want to receive his forgiveness and, and mercy, and, and, and you're getting raked, okay? You're getting ripped off here. Now, now, let me ask you another question. Where do you suppose they set up the, the tables and the places where, where they're doing all this? Let me, let me eliminate a couple things. It's not the Holy of Holies because they're still alive, they, they weren't doing it in the Holy of Holies, all right? They'd be dead. I'm real sure they didn't do it in the court of men. That's this is not going on. Um, guys that want to go home to their wife, they probably didn't do it in the court of the wives either. Most commentators will tell us that it was in the court of the Gentiles, which is, which is quite fascinating. And it's probably why uh, Mark's gospel and Mark's gospel... Um, Mark writes to, to a Gentile audience. He has Jesus saying, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations. Which makes me think, okay, is part of what Jesus is irritated with is, um, you, you know, that he's going, hey, people come, the Gentiles come, and how do, I, how do I get close to God? You're, you're buying and selling animals here. You're, you're, you're exchanging in the place where we're to come for prayer. Now, if that's the case, and, and, and I think that's at least part of the issue, and you're following Jesus, is there part of you that goes, really, Jesus? We need to make space for the Romans do I want to remind you, Jesus? I mean, he already knows this. They're the oppressors, all right? Um, Jesus, can't you just defeat our enemies and everything will be okay? <laughs> if you defeat them, they won't be here and we don't need to make space for them. You know, just, just defeat them. Now, Jesus isn't unaware, yeah? You know, it's, it's not like Jesus is like, no, no, the Romans are really good guys and everything they bring in is great. Just trust me. He's not doing that, right? He's already told them. He's like, you, you see how the Gentiles uh, rule over one another? You, you see how they lord it over one? He goes, yeah, don't do that, all right? Don't, don't do that. And he will even say to Pilate, you know, because Pilate like kind of kind of pulls rank on him like, you stand before me. Do you know what authority do I have? And Jesus is like, 
yeah, you wouldn't have any authority if it wasn't given to you by my father, but, but go on, show me your card, it's cool. Um, but Jesus, in the middle of knowing, he, he knows that, that the enemies here have issues, Jesus says, you need to love your enemies. Jesus is saying, you need to make space for repentance. You need to make space so that they can come into the the presence of God. I mean, imagine that. You you, you come to pray and and, and you're poor and you get ripped off or or you're a Gentile and you go, where am I supposed to pray? There's no room here. And even if there is room, they're doing an auction in the middle of where we're supposed to pray. And it's fascinating. John's gospel never mentions at, at this point of Jesus cleansing the temple. But at this point in the story, in John's gospel, some Gentiles uh, come up to Philip and they say, sir, we want to see Jesus. I'm just kind of thinking here, putting pieces together. They saw him cleanse the temple and they're like, yeah, we want to talk to that guy. Let's, let, let, us, let us talk to that guy. And, and I look at this and I think, no wonder Jesus chased them out. They, they made the temple something that it wasn't supposed to be. And, and maybe many of you already know this. Jesus isn't the first one who, who declared these words. Jeremiah was. Centuries before. Listen to what Jeremiah said. Jeremiah 7, 11. Jeremiah says to the people, Has this house, which is called by my name, become a a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, I I myself have seen it, declares the Lord. And the context of Jeremiah speaking this isn't just what's going on in the temple, but what God is saying in Jeremiah, he's um, he's looking at his people and he's saying, you can't just live however you want. And then come to the temple like it's a hideout. It, it's almost like, like they, they violate everything that God says them to do. And then they come to the temple to kind of hide from God. And he's like, he's like no, you, you, you don't come here like a hideout for, for thieves. And, and here's something. We don't have to speculate what they were doing there uh, because Jeremiah is going to tell us. In fact, I'm guessing Jesus wouldn't have used these exact words of Jeremiah if there wasn't something very similar going on in the first century. So let me, let me read um, the, the list of accusations that, that God gives uh, through Jeremiah. Jeremiah 7, 3 through 10, it says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Amend your ways and your deeds, and I will let you dwell in this place. And he says, do not trust in these deceptive words. This is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. And, and God said that he was going to bring dis- destruction to Jerusalem, and the people would, would keep doing whatever, and they would go, no, that's not going to happen. They'd say, this is the temple of the Lord. This is the temple of the Lord. We're safe as long as we're here. And God's like, try me on this. Um, and you, we don't say those things today, right? Has anybody ever walked around and like, hey, I'm safe, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord? You probably haven't heard that, right? But you've heard people go, well, I was baptized. So I could do whatever. I said the prayer. I, I, I walked that aisle right there and knelt over there. And those are good things, all right? Get, get baptized, say the prayer. Uh, those, are, those are good things. But, but Jesus, Jesus, it's not the words. It, 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 it's not these words. Verse 5 says, For if you truly amend your ways, here's what God wants them to change. If you amend your ways and your deeds, if you truly execute justice, execute justice one with another. So in other words, we need to be just. You need to live in, in a just society. As far as it is, is up to you, live just with one another. He says, if you do not oppress the sojourner, who is that? that that's the immigrant. That's, that, that's the foreigner. God, God actually repeatedly cares about 
the foreigner. He repeatedly cares about the immigrant. In fact, he tells the Israelites, he goes, that was you at one time. And, and, you, and you need to remember that. He says, do not oppress the sojourner. He says, don't oppress the fatherless. That's the orphan. We need to take care of the orphan or the widow or shed innocent blood in this place. We live in a country, we shed a lot of innocent blood from conception to the grave, all right? And, and he, says, he says, do not shed innocent blood. And if you do not go after other gods to your own harm, what is, what is this? This is idolatry. In other words, he's saying, follow me, follow me only. And, and you know what? If, if we had time, I could break down every one of those issues and we can go over them. And, and here's, here's, the, here's the harsh reality, because sometimes we have the, oh, yeah, those people do that. Those people do that. I guarantee you we cross all kinds of political and ideological bounds, boundaries here. And, and God's saying, it's not about that. It's about me. It, it, it's a package deal. We're, we're not going with their package deal. We're not going with their package deal. We're going with mine. Okay? And God says this. This is how you that, that carry my name, you people that are, that are the, the temple of God in the world, this is how you live. And he goes on and he says, he says, then I will let you dwell in this place, in this land uh, that I gave of all to your fathers forever. Behold, you trust in deceptive words to no avail. Will you still murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, make offerings to Baal, and go after other gods that you have not known and come to me and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say we are delivered only to go and do all these abominations. And I think about that, and I, and I go back to that parable of Jesus. And I, and I have to ask the question, could Jesus say to me, you did not want me to reign over you? You're, you're, you're okay where it fit in, but the whole package. Jesus is saying, am, am I your king? Am I your Lord? And I think, I think it's we, something we need to, to, to ask. Is, is Jesus my Lord? I recently heard a quote. Uh, I'll close with this. It says, most people in our churches are what we call soft secular people who want to incorporate Jesus into their particular worldview. Jesus, on the other hand, wants to incorporate us into his worldview, God's worldview. And, it, and it's, it's quite, the, quite the shift. And I want to challenge us. If we follow Jesus during the parade, and we follow him to Jerusalem, let's continue to follow him. Follow him into the depths. Follow him to the cross. Follow him through the resurrection. And, and I think what we'll find We'll find a journey that's not easy, but we'll find a journey that will transform us, that will transform us um, into in the people that he calls us to be, that it transforms us into a life of peace with kingdom purpose and Christ's rule in our hearts. My invitation, all the time and particularly the next few weeks, let's follow Jesus. Let's let Jesus change us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you that you're a God that doesn't change with the current conditions or the current climate. But you're a God that's faithful from Genesis to Revelation. Your God has been faithful to us. And Lord, we declare in this moment that you are king. You are king, you are Lord of this place, you are Lord of our lives. And Father, I pray uh, for anybody that is struggling right now that they would just declare again today that yes, you are Lord. You are Lord, you are Savior, you are God of our lives. Father, have your way with each person today. It's in Christ's name we pray, amen.
and generations falling down in worship to sing a song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing a song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your
parade. about us. He is Lord and he cares about us. He is our Lord and our Savior. I love that pastor that we got to remember he is Lord and he deserves our respect and our honor. But at that exact same time, he is our Savior and he cares. Let's go this week. Let's take this attitude of praise and honor. And let's live for him. Let's build his kingdom. Let's love our neighbors as he loves us. Because he is holy. He is holy. Hosanna. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Thank you for your goodness. forever. Be with us this week as we go into the world and build your kingdom. Lord, we give you honor and glory and praise. And we trust in you in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Church, don't forget to give that card to somebody. Invite them to come here next Sunday, Easter Sunday. Two services. Really looking forward to having you guys and your family and your friends be a part of this amazing experience. Love you guys. Remember, you're entering your mission field. We'll see you next week.